Welcome back to Free Fridays. Today we're going to talk about the top five things not to do on a gig. So don't go anywhere. So the world is starting to open up again. This would be a good time to talk about etiquette for sitting in on somebody else's gig or going to a jam session or maybe even etiquette on your own gig. In a jam situation, a lot of times there's a sign-up list. The first thing, obviously, you want to do is get there early enough to put your name on the list. Remember that not all jams are fair. Jams are in the business, generally, of making money. The people running the jams are probably going to favor certain musicians. If they don't know you, if they don't know that you're a good player, or if you're not a great player, you may be moved to the back of the list. They also may put you up with somebody that you don't know or not somebody that you'd want to play with. You may want to play with the house band, but you may not get up with the house band. The first thing not to do is complain. <laughs> don't complain. Get up, do the best job you can with whatever band you at whatever time they get you on. Don't go to the band leader, any member of the house band, and ask, when am I going to get up? If they don't get you up, either don't go back to that jam, or the next time, get there a little early, or after the gig is over, remind the band leader that you didn't get up and that you would like to next time. The more polite you are, the calmer you are, the cooler you are, the more likely they are to enjoy your company and want you to come back again. On a sit-in situation, do not ask the band if you can sit in. Again, all rules are made to be broken. If it's a local band and they know you, you could say, hey guys, if you get a chance, I'd like to play tonight. But even that, even that is pushing things. What you do want to do is go make conversation before the gig with somebody in the band. If your goal is to sit in that night and jam with the band, that's great. But if you let the band know that that is your only motive for being at their show, the chances of you getting up to play are actually diminished. What you'd like to do is go up, make a conversation with one of the members of the band, particularly the band leader, let him know how great you think he is, that you enjoyed the show, or I love this rendition of that song. Maybe talk about music. Mention some Howlin' Wolf records. Mention a record that you thought he might like. Talk about music. You could talk about technical elements of music to let him know that you understand some theory. Or you could just talk about how much you dig this song or that song. Either way, that's going to be a good introduction. You could casually mention, hey, I play harmonica a little bit, and I really like that one song you guys did. The original had Little Walter on it. I love the way he played that. Something like that. That may open the door for a nice transition where he says, oh really, do you have any harmonicas on you tonight? And you can say, well, you know, I think I got a few in the car. Let me go get them. If it's a touring band that's coming through town, I cannot tell you how important this is. Do not ask to sit in. Do not, do not. A lot of times, you guys might not know this, the club actually frowns upon the touring band getting locals up. The other thing that you might not understand is that there may be 15 or 16 or 20 or more harmonica players in the audience. Some of them may even be better than you. If he says yes to getting you up, they now have five or 10 different people going, well, how come they didn't get me? So every single time you say yes to one person sitting in, you open the door to a bunch of other people wondering why they can't sit in. Maybe people that were polite and didn't ask. Maybe people that that band leader is known longer than you or doesn't know at all. It just creates all kinds of problems. So a lot of times when a touring band is coming to town, they don't get anybody to sit in. Additionally, the truth is, most of the audience really doesn't want to see the hometown hero get up. But there is an exception to that rule. 
Now, what you can do is the same thing that you did in the open mic slash jam situation. Meet with the band leader and say, hey, listen, I love that rendition of this song. What are you guys going to do next set? I love that stuff. That was great, right? Buy a CD. Make an introduction. Have something to talk about other than you sitting in that may let that band leader know that you're a musician, that you're a good player, that you're polite, and that you're a nice person. So that's how you get on stage at a jam or a sit-in situation. This is one I had to learn the hard way. Everybody loves to use their own gear, especially harmonica players. Oftentimes, in a sit-in situation, even an open mic, there's not a good amp for harmonica on stage. The temptation is to ask to bring our own gear. Of course we want to sound good. Of course we want to be able to compete with the loud guitar player. But sometimes it's an extra problem for the band leader if you have to bring your gear on stage. They may need to mic you. There may not be room on stage. They may only want you up for one song and then you have this big amp and maybe a pedal board and these harmonicas sitting on stage and it's uncomfortable. It's okay to ask if you can bring your gear on stage, particularly if they know you're gonna sit in well before the gig. Maybe you've contacted the band a day, a week, a month before the gig, and then you can say, hey, is it okay if I bring my amp and set it up early before the show? That might be okay. Generally speaking, the best thing to do, especially if they don't know you, is just get up and use the PA mic. Do the best you can to sound good. Once you win the band's affection as a person, as a player with etiquette, as somebody that understands what their job is, once you understand that they have a job to do and that your sitting in is a privilege, not a right, then they're more likely to allow you in the future to bring your gear. The first thing you want to do is win their affection as a good person that understands that their job is hard, full of pressure, and that a lot of people want their attention and their time. Be easy, be low maintenance, be cool. Sound like you've been there before in their position. The more relaxed you are, the more able you are to go with the flow, the more likely you're gonna be able to get every single thing that you wanna get, maybe not that night, but in the future. This is absolutely a marathon that you can win. You just gotta run it one step at a time. Don't overplay. One of the very worst things you can do once you manage to get on stage, whether it's at a jam, whether it's in a sit-in situation, or even on your own gig, is overplay. What do I mean by overplaying? Specifically, what I don't want you guys to do is to play over the vocalist. Play over whoever is soloing, whether it's a guitar solo, a bass solo, a drum solo, or a piano solo, saxophone solo, flute, oboe, theremin, violin, you get the idea. Do not play when somebody is singing or when somebody is soloing. There's always the exception to the rule when we listen to Little Walter, we hear Little Walter playing underneath Muddy. Traditional blues has a history of the harmonica playing constantly throughout the music. Regardless of that, know your place. If you are playing traditional Chicago blues and you know how to play like Little Walter or the people like him, if you can do that, that way, in that supportive kind of way, be sure you do it with the volume lower. Give yourself some place to go when you get your solo. But generally speaking, the best thing to do is not play anything during the vocals. Do not play anything during anyone else's solo. Force the band leader to look at you and say, Go ahead, blow. 
It's very tempting as a harmonica player or even a saxophone player or an instrument that is not playing all the time to feel this pressure with all of the eyes of the audience upon you to do something. You feel the need to contribute to the music. You will actually be contributing a lot more to the music by not playing at all. Don't give in to the pressure to do something because you think everybody wants you to. You're up there to be a musician. Part of being a musician is knowing when to play and when not to play. That kind of pressure can actually cause you to not be invited back. Don't give in to the pressure. Sit there and let the band do their thing. Let the singer sing, let the guitar player play, and when it's time for you to take a solo, wait for that cue. Keep your eyes open, don't close your eyes. Watch the band leader. Wait for your moment when they say to play and then dig in and do the best you can. The worst thing you can do is to mar everything that's happening with a constant barrage of endless harmonica. If you understand root notes, if you understand what a major triad is, what a seventh chord is, if you have a good sense of where the downbeat is, is it on one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four, or is it on one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four? And you can complement those rhythms with the correct notes. This may be a time when you can break that rule. If you're not sure about that, or even if you are, the best thing you can possibly do is sit back and wait for them to give you your time to shine. Here's the other thing, and this is really important. When you take your solo, first of all, you wanna know when your solo is up. How many bars is each chorus? Is it an eight bar blues? Is it a six bar blues? Is it a 12 bar blues? Or is it a 24 bar blues? Whichever one of those it is, you want to be aware of when that solo ends. Before the solo ends, you want to look over at the band leader, whoever's giving you your solos, whether that's the singer or the guitar player, whoever the band leader is, you want to look at them and be like, should I play another one? Or I'm done. The other thing you can do is you can end your solo with a cliche turnaround. Da 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 And then look at the band, letting them know that you're finished. The safest thing to do, if it's a 12 bar blues, for example, is at the end of your 12 bars, hand it back to the guitar player. If he wants you to play more, he'll let you know. They will appreciate the fact that you are actively communicating and aware of the fact that it is their job, their gig, their band, and their song, and that you are there to add to that only, not to steal the show, not to steal the thunder. If you know the guys really well and you want to take it around two times because you're feeling it, by all means do. But in a new situation with a new group of guys, if you want to be the most respectful guy that you can possibly be, if you want to make sure that you get invited back to that jam, to that sit-in, whatever it is, play it safe. When you're done taking around your 12 bars, your 8 bars, your 24 bars, whatever it is, look at them. Let them know you're done or let them know with a curious face, should I play some more? If the answer is yes, go ahead and do it again at the end of that one. The other important reason to make eye contact before the end of your solo is it may be time for somebody else's solo. It may be time for the vocalist to sing. Giving them four beats, eight beats of a heads up to let them know that you're finished gives them time to realize that they're coming in, get closer to their mic, step on whatever pedal they were, pick up the song where they wanted it. If they're constantly waiting to see when you're done or whatever, then they have to adjust much quicker on the fly and it's very difficult. I can't tell you how many times we've had somebody sit in and they take a solo, especially like on a slow blues, and they go on forever and ever and ever. The band leader doesn't want to be rude, doesn't want to interrupt them and just start singing over their solo. 
but it's going on too long. The audience isn't interested. Everybody in the band is wondering when they're going to stop. And that's why they don't get asked to do another song. Make them want more. Give appropriate respect to the fact that it's not your job. If it's your band and you want to solo a hundred choruses, then that's your decision to do that. If you can solo for a hundred choruses and keep everybody in the room interested, by all means do it. But if it's not your gig and you'd like to ever come back and play again, make good eye contact, always play it safe, and know the structure of the song so that you can end your solo or ask if you can play another one with your eyes only or hint that you're curious as to whether or not you should play another chorus. Get in, get out, be cool. One of the complaints that I hear a lot from musicians is I went to the jam and they didn't play any of the songs that I liked. Or I got up and I had to play harmonica over a Jimi Hendrix song. They didn't play any blues. They didn't play anything that was good for my instrument. This is always going to be a problem. Even in bands that you become a member of, until you either learn how to describe the structure of the song or you can sing. Even if you're calling instrumental, you have to be able to tell the band what it is that you want. You have to be able to say, here's the drum beat. If you don't know the name of the drum beat, if you don't know if it's a rumba or a shuffle or a funk or whatever, is to sing the drum beat. So when you're learning your song, listen to the drum beat. And if it goes, unchka, 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 say, Unchika, 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 unchika. If it goes ba doom, ba da, ba doom, ba da, ba doom, ba da, like a shuffle, say ba doom, ba da, ba doom, ba da, ba doom, ba da. That is infinitely more important than naming it. As a matter of fact, different regions of the country have different names. If you say a Texas shuffle in Texas, you're going to get something different than a Texas shuffle in New York. So being able to sing the drum beat, um, kachak, um, kachak, is important. Also, knowing the chord changes. Is it a one, four, five? Does it start from the five? Is there a quick four? Is the key major or minor? If the song is in a minor key, you have to say it's minor. You may have to say, I would like minor chords throughout the song. Knowing the structure of the song, understanding what the bass line is, you can turn to the bass player, you can also sing the bass line to the bass player. Bump, ba da ba da ba da ba da bump, ba da ba da ba da 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 or bump. Boom, bump, bump, boom, bump, or bump, ba dump, ba dump, ba dump, ba dump, ba dump, ba dump, ba dump. If you can do that, take the time to make sure that the guys in your band know what it is that you want to play. And then say, I'm going to play the head, and then I'm going to take the first solo, and I'll hand it off to you after that. That's how you get what you want on an instrumental. If you can't sing, don't expect that you can call songs and ask somebody else to sing them. They may not know the words. Maybe they do, but it's not polite and it's not good etiquette to tell somebody else that is a band leader that does know how to sing, that does have a bunch of songs that they would like to do, which ones you would like them to play. Otherwise, just sit back, accept whatever's going to come your way and do it. If you would like something specific, learn that song. Learn how to sing the bass line, learn how to sing the drums, know the structure of the song, whether it's a 1-4-5, whether it's a 12 bar, whether it's an 18 bar, whatever it is, know it and be able to communicate that and then you'll get what you want, problem solved. Once you've successfully communicated how you'd like your song to go and the basic structure behind it, the next thing you have to do is figure out how to end a song. I've been in lots of situations where somebody called a song, they got into it and they didn't know how to end it. They looked at somebody else and they couldn't do it. The best way to do that without taking too much time in this video is to pay attention to how other people end the song. A lot of people put their hands up, say hey, and then they play ba da da ba da ba ba da da ba. Learn your visual cues of how to end a song. Sometimes you can say to the soloist, take it home, and then they'll end it for you, but that's not the best way. The best way is to end the song yourself, put your hand up, slam it down, and then play your ending and get out. 
If you don't know how to end a song, it can be very embarrassing as it goes on over and over and over again. It's a very common mistake. It happens to all of us when we're first learning. Just pay attention to how other people are ending the songs and imitate them. You'll get what you want. And now for number five on our list of the top five things to not do at a jam, sit-in, or even a gig is your appearance. We're not just talking about clothes. We're going to talk about that. But the first thing I want to talk about is how do you come off, not only to the audience, but to the guys in the band. One of the most awful things that you could possibly do is make faces. I'm talking about negative faces. If somebody plays something you don't like, or something happens that you don't like. If you sing the drum beat correctly, like I told you to, and you don't get that drum beat, if you sing the bass line correctly, and you don't get that, if somebody else does something like the stuff that's on this list, like play over your solo or something, don't make a face. Don't yell at them. Don't say anything to them. Don't give them that we call it the stink eye. Don't give them the evil eye, the stink eye. Don't do it act like nothing happened. Not everybody in the audience can tell something's wrong until you let them know something is wrong. Now, there may be a few people in the audience and definitely in the band that can tell when somebody is soloing too long, when somebody is too loud, when somebody has gone over the amount of time that they should have played or is playing too much. But nobody in the audience knows that until you let them know. If something is not going your way, act like everything's fine. Put a smile on your face, have fun. You don't have to be fake. Just act as if everything was going the way you thought. As far as a dress code goes, or appearance, or stage clothes, or what do I wear, how do I put my hair, this is largely subjective. If you're in a band, where everybody's dressing up, it's a good idea to dress up too. You don't want to be the one guy in the band that looks sloppy. I had a band member that was a monster, monster player, and he absolutely refused to wear anything but jeans and a t-shirt and Crocs for years on stage. I let him do it. I offered to take him shopping. I offered to get him some new clothes. I pushed him, but he was such a good player, I let him wear it. The band was together for 10 years. Five years after the band ended, he called me up and he said, you know, I've been watching all those old videos and man, I just wish I had dressed better. <laughs> Take a little time to get your appearance together. One of the best ways to combat nerves or anxiety before a gig is a ritual of getting ready. Taking the shower, shaving, picking out the clothes that you're gonna wear. It helps psychologically prepare you. It's not unlike a football player in the locker room putting their pads on. You're just kind of going through that ritual meditation of getting ready to do what you're going to do. Now, by contrast, if you're going to a jam, you probably don't wanna to get too dressed up. What you'd like to do is look nice, but don't wear something that makes you stick out and look crazy. Everybody's gonna be going, who the heck does that guy think he is? Now, if you're a monster player and you're sitting at home and you know you're a monster player and you have an image that you'd like to sell and you wanna sell the whole package of how bad you are, by all means, dress up and go to the gig wearing some crazy stuff with a hat with two stakes on it or whatever the heck it is. That's your business. But I'm just saying, don't be too much unless you can back it up. Just be cautious. All right, guys, that's the top five worst things you can do on stage. I have known some incredible musicians, great players, that didn't follow some of these rules and nobody ever invites them to play. Nobody wants them to get up on stage. Nobody even wants them at the jam. It doesn't matter how good they are. It's that attitude. They're either looking at people wrong or they're stepping on people's toes or they're too loud or they're playing over the vocalist or playing over other people's solos 
or they don't cue the end of their solos, or they don't end the song, any number of the things that I gave on this list, it doesn't matter how good they are. It doesn't matter how good you are. If that ego or that lack of knowledge supersedes your ability to play your instrument, nobody cares. Nobody cares if you're a great player, if you're not fun to be around, if you're not fun to play with. More times than not, musicians with half the ability level, with a fair degree of etiquette, a good attitude, and a sunny disposition, get invited back and get jobs in touring bands and go on to have professional careers even though they're not as talented as somebody else in town that didn't do any of that stuff. Be a team player, have fun, be respectful, know your place, play the long game. You don't have to tell people how good you are, they're gonna find out how good you are. And if you follow these rules, if you're respectful, if you're kind, if you're nice, if you pay attention and learn something about music theory and structure and stuff like that, people are gonna love you and you're gonna get back up on stage and you're gonna have a wonderful, wonderful time playing music. Thank you guys so much, especially thanks to my Patreon patrons. You guys are the best. You're making these videos possible for all of the people that don't have money and you're supporting me, making it possible for me to take less students so that I have hours and hours and hours of time it takes to make each one of these videos, especially this one. It took all day and I haven't even started editing it yet. Patreon, Jason Ritchie, www.patreon.com slash Jason Ritchie right there. Go to the site, it's linked below. Become a Patreon patron for as low as $1 a month. You can contribute any amount. You're supporting somebody that doesn't have the money for these videos and you're helping me out and you're making it possible for me to live my wildest dreams and be able to give back to you all of the knowledge that I have had to learn the hard way. Thank you so much to my endorsers. Honer Harmonicas. Thank you, Honer Harmonicas. I appreciate you. Thank you to Blue Moon Harmonicas, making custom combs, custom covers. Thank you, Tom Halchek and Blue Moon Harmonicas. Check out Blue Moon, www.bluemoon.com. What about the Lone Wolf Blues Company? All the pedals, my microphone that I use. It's the Jason Ritchie Signature Microphone, and it's made right here in Louisiana by Randy Landry of the Lone Wolf Blues Company. And I play that harmonica microphone through a harp gear amplifier. 410 HG50, same amp I used at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Same amp I used on Johnny Winter's Grammy Award winning album, Step Back. Check out my website, www.mooncat.org. They call me the Mooncat. The Mooncat's got tour dates. I'm finally back on tour. Things are starting to open up. I got gigs here in New Orleans and I'm playing all over the country. Come check out my tour dates. I got CDs, I got t-shirts, and most importantly, hit the subscribe button. If you're not subscribed, subscribe below for hundreds, hundreds of free harmonica videos, product reviews, videos about bipolar disorder, addiction, and my battles with, blues stories, where I tell you all about famous blues musicians that I've played with, or I get my friends to tell you about famous blues musicians they've played with. Anything you can imagine, performance videos, videos from tour, funny, awkward moments, it's all right here on Jason Ritchie's YouTube. Subscribe today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's one of the most important videos I've ever made. I know there was not one harmonica lick in the whole video, and that's the point. There didn't need to be. <laughs> Sometimes the best thing we can do is just listen. I had a wonderful time here today. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Share it with all of your friends that play too much. I'll see you next week.